welcome back uh, again to another video. And today we're going to dig deep into our OCD sides yeah. where we are always trying to organize things. So um, why do we need to classify matter? Well, because there's a bunch of different kinds of matter and we want to be able to determine what type of matter things are. So what we're going to do here is we're going to have a little flow chart that we're going to follow follow here. And as, as Ms. McKean has already put on here, uh, sometimes we write the words all matter. And so if we were to take like any sample of matter, and we were, to, we were to look at it and we're like, take peeks at it and we wanted to categorize it, mm. we'd ask some questions about it. Yeah. And as we asked the questions, we'd be able to follow, it's kind of like your pick your own adventure books, which yeah. I'm sure as as adult people, we rigorously follow, but I have, I have a six year old and eight year old and they love the books where it's like, hey, if, if Tony punches Susan in the face, go to page 144 <laughs> and you can see him in jail, right? And they, they, they go or, too much. Or maybe scavenger hunt. Oh yeah, that, like, that. you know, oh, answer this question, it'll take you here. If you answer this way, it takes you there. Maybe so the other thing we need to be aware of is that if we're writing stuff down, you're we writing it down, right? right? So uh, if you take a look at this in your packet. Mm -hmm. um, the first question we're gonna ask, ask is, can it be separated by physical means? means. Now physical means is another way of saying a physical change. Um, and we're gonna discuss uh, what a physical change is, but can you give a brief like, what is a physical change? Yeah, for sure. So basically, um, physical change is something um, that you are going to make a change to the substance, but it's not going to change what it is. Yeah. Right. We we, we kind of say if the identity of the things remains the same, you have a physical change. Right. Uh, a chemical change is the exact opposite, and that's sure. where we live in the land of chemical change. Yes. We love that in chemistry. Yeah. So basically, what you do is you ask yourself this question. Okay, when you're looking at your substance, like you said, so you have it in front of you. And if the answer is yes, then what you actually have, we call a mixture. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. So you have your mixtures over here, thank you. And if your answer was no to that question, right, then you have what we call a pure substance, right? So as you can see, the chart kind of continues because these are not just where we stop. Of course not. Clear not. Can't, can't so, do that. so a mixture is literally think of anything that if you have it together and then you pull it apart, the identity remains the same. Like like an example, this might be if you're a, a devout cereal uh, mm. eater. Like favorite like, cereal. Uh, probably Lucky Charms in the in the olden days. Okay. Okay. What about you? Oh, I go through I go through old lady versus like you know. So I would say if it's a kid, it has to get the whole chocolate. A kid cereal. Yeah. Uh, I was tricks. Oh yeah. Yeah. Tricks are for kids. Yeah. Um, okay. So if you were to take, for example, Lucky Charms, and you put all the Luckies and the Elves or whatever they're chopped up into there yeah. into the bowl, you could literally then take those pieces out, and the little marshmallow piece is still a marshmallow piece right. before and after. So that would be an example of a mixture where, yeah. if we were to pull it apart, the identities remain the same. Mm -hmm. So whenever or, we're, or maybe even salt water. Salt water yeah. would be an example of that as well. Now it's kind of a little more tricky because right. salt is in water. But if you were to boil off the water, yeah. then you just have the, the salt. salt. Exactly. The water. So it's, it's an example of something that is a mixture. Yeah. But as we've just stated with this, oh, I got you first. Um, with you take salt water versus you take Lucky Charms, right? Um, those two mixtures are different types. They are. Yeah, I mean, they, they are. And so the question that we then ask ourselves to differentiate between those types is, is the composition or is that mixture, right? What it's made of, is it uniform? And y'all know this better than anyone, because we have uniforms here. Right, we do. And supposedly, it's supposed to make everybody kind of look the same. The same, exactly. So if you were to take like uh, uh, alphabet soup, for example, right? Mm -hmm. That'd be an example of a mixture because the alphabets and the soup portion, right. you could separate them out. Mm -hmm. But if you were to take one spoonful of alphabet soup and another, are they gonna be spelling the same words? No. Are you gonna have the same amount of alphabetiness per mm -hmm. soup? Thing? No, so in that case, we'd say that it's not uniform throughout. Mm -hmm. And if it's not th uniform throughout, we say that it is heterogeneous. Now, you may be thinking, oh, we learned that last year in biology. You didn't. Yeah. <laughs> you Although I not. do enjoy seeing heterozygous here. Yeah, not the same. But no. hetero it does mean the same. Hetero means different, whereas yeah. homo means the same. same. So on the other side, we have homogeneous. Right. Now, in her example, with uh, probably a better example, uh, just because it's more visual, is you ever had like chocolate milk back in the olden days, like powder? Mm, yeah, or, or the syrup. The syrup, yeah. And you stir it in. Mm -hmm. When you're done, if you stir it in really, really well, one sip, another sip, 
They taste, taste exactly the same. The same. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we're looking at homogeneous, uh, a, a much more macro view of this, I, mean, I don't know if this is a great example because at a molecular level, things look a lot different, right? True, but true, true, true. If, if you look at heterogeneous versus, <laughs> let's put it in the right spot. Yeah. If you look at heterogeneous versus homogeneous, an example of a heterogeneous mixture would be something like a chocolate chip cookie. Mm, my favorite. Right? Because the chocolate chips are not perfectly placed all the way through. Or a uh, homogeneous example would be like a sugar cookie. So that's like a more macro example. Oh, of okay, I like those, the cookies together. Now, you're going to end up having to recreate this table at some point to your probably chagrin. Um, <laughs> but what we're going to ask you to do is add, fill out the questions, answer the questions. And then at the bottom, we're going to ask you to give you a couple examples of each kind. Yeah. So can you think of some other examples that match in each of those categories? So I like, uh, always really uh, like pizza as an example of heterogeneous because you can see all the different toppings. Um, and as we all know from having to be somewhere where there was a pizza that we didn't like, you know you can pick them off. <laughs> but fair. just because I picked off the onions that I don't like on my pizza, the onion was still an onion, That's right? Fair. So that would definitely yeah. be heterogeneous. Now, uh, we, we should, before we go any farther, there's another term we use for homogeneous. Mm, okay, yeah, and yeah. We call homogeneous mixtures, we call them solutions. So if you ever hear the word solution versus homogeneous, mm. make sure that, they, that you understand they're the same thing. And mixtures, we gave you examples of solids and solids, but mixtures can be like liquids and solids. Like oh, for example, okay. uh, salt in water, that's a, yeah. a solid being dissolved. Uh, how about even gases and liquids? Okay, don't get crazy. Well, <laughs> woo, Whoa. you ever drink a soda? I clearly have. And if you do, okay. you're gonna notice that if you open up the top, you're going to see gas escaping at a rapid rate. Okay. That's because the gas is is homogeneously in there to begin right. with, and then it leaves after we open it But it was up. with the liquid? Yes, so, it was. Okay. All right, so those would be this left side of your chart, which is all mixtures. So again, if we went back up to this question, that was only if we answered that original question that sent us here. Okay, yeah. but what if we had been sent this way? That's right. right? right. So we were underneath pure substance on this side, right? Yeah. So as always. Right. We can't just stop at pure substance. We have to divide it further. So we have another question here. So this one was, is the competition, uh, composition uniform? This question is, can it be separated, right? Or sometimes we would say broken apart, that either works. way, either works. by chemical means. Chemical means. Now we're going to, we're going to live in the playground of chemical and physical changes. Oh, yes. uh, chemical changes are ones where you have something and it's like, cool. And then you're like, and that's something different. It looks completely different, its identity is different, it acts differently. Yes. So there are two categories to this, and one is if we say yes, we can separate this thing out, we're gonna end up with a compound. And if we say no, we're gonna end up with an element. So what I like to think about with these um, things is basically if something is as simple as it possibly can be, like if we went any further, it's changing the identity, it's an element, yeah. it can't go any further. But if we have something where we have uh, one more way to separate, like if we have something that can still further be separated, then that's what we call a compound. So uh, uh, you're gonna notice this, but here, whenever you have a periodic table, mm -hmm. every single one of those things on the periodic table, those are all elements. So for example, uh, calcium, how about sodium, uh, chlorine, etc. So these are all individual elements. And if you're ever looking for examples, you have 115 depending for on the sure. periodic table on there. Um, but for compounds, you're gonna have two or more atoms put together. Now, for example, NaCl is a much different thing than sodium by itself. Absolutely. And chlorine is a much different thing in by itself than if it's with NaCl. And we're talking about this in class, how uh, chlorine by itself is a poisonous gas. Absolutely. Sodium is a violently reacting metal. What we pour on our, 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 our food is neither of those things. So right. a, some sort of identity changes occur. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at the, the overall question, can we break apart NaCl into two pieces and have them remain the same as they were before? Absolutely not. No. Sodium in here is different than sodium by itself. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we took Lucky Charms and we broke it apart, the Lucky and the Charms, what do you want to call it, they're going to be the same as they were before. Yeah, now, sure. some examples on this, I mean, you have to be really be a little bit careful because I have students go, like, I have 115 things and I'm just going to put them all together and those are my compounds. No. And just like in life, even if you really want to put two things together, I'm talking about you relationships, they <laughs> may not want to go together. So you can't just randomly take two elements mm. and be like, 
go together because right. they probably won't want to. Or them being together is really harmful for <laughs> everyone is. else it's around, really right? Oh, there are some relationship yeah. Carbon too. monoxide, they'll go together oh, yeah? and they'll yeah. kill you. They'll, 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 they'll remove the rest of your life. Yeah, so, so that's super fun. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk a little more about these things as we go along and, and we're going to camp out in this region yes. of chemical changes, because we love doing chemical changes. Mm -hmm. Next video, we'll talk about the difference between physical and chemical changes right. and actually perform some of these. You can see them. Mm -hmm. um, anything else you want to add to this here? I think this is it. Hopefully, some of this is review. Ooh, yeah, yeah, you might have seen it before. If you yeah. haven't, you can use this kind of as a flow chart to follow through. We'll talk about it in class. Uh, as always, it's been great to see you. See you next time. Take your notes. Indeed. <laughs> Bye.